Welcome everybody to our uh, uh, our fourth webinar of uh, of our fourth season. It's it's our 158th webinar that we've done uh, since we started these things, and uh, always a good time to put these things together. And but this one is one that I've uh, that I'm really looking forward to. We have a a couple of uh, co-hosts joining me here today that are friends of mine that I always enjoy getting together with. Uh, don't get together with them in person as much as I would like, but. Um, uh, going to have a good time today chatting about these things. We're going to talk about the Smarty Cam 3 lineup, the you know the differences, where you might want to use one, what what uh, is the same across the line, what is different, uh, things like that. Uh, dig into some little bit of information about uh, Smarty Cams and cameras and, and, and use in motorsports. And we're going to do that with, with our co-hosts. First, Robbie uh, Yeoman, Chief Technology for AIM Sports, has been here uh, working with AIM just about, uh, we're about the same duration here. So uh, you know, we can't get rid of us, right, Robbie? Uh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> they've tried and they, they failed. But they failed. We've done pretty good so far, keeping our heads down. Thank <laughs> you for joining us. Robbie is going to be uh, you know, talking about some, some of the technical side. He's got so much information and background and, uh, uh, and understanding of these things. Thanks for joining us, Robbie. I appreciate Appreciate you coming. Yeah, happy to be here. It's always nice to touch base with you guys and sit down and talk about electronics. That's Absolutely. probably one of my favorite things to do. Absolutely. And and uh, Robbie has been here um, uh, for for virtually all of uh, all of our webinars, whether it has been um, up front as a co-host or or helping in the background, answering questions and and helping getting me the information that I need to do some of the stuff that we do. Just like our other co-host, Brick from our Roanoke office. Brick is here, and uh, uh, Brick is one of our uh, younger techs that has been uh, just going at it, just knocking them dead with uh, with support. I really appreciate what you do for us, Brick. And Brick has also been here for almost all of them. Uh, very, very helpful. Brick, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me at this wonderful roundtable discussion. Yeah, uh, I'll have you know, though, I, if, if we exclude Robbie, I'm actually the oldest technician. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't know it was a competition, so I, darn, I, should, I, I I'm going to keep better notes next time. No, it's, Robbie's the only one that's got me beat until we get up into. Yeah, we won't talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. The uh, great guys. We're, what we're going to talk about today is the is the Smarty Cam lineup. You know the. Um, uh, what I'd like to kind of start with is, is while I am going to change this page to go to uh, uh, the, the different models of, of what are available, um, I'd like to start off with a little bit. Uh, we'll leave this panel up for, for some. At, at some point, we'll pull this panel down and we'll just we'll just chat and answer questions and and, and have a good time. But um, the the Smarty Cam three models, we've got four of them. They're all available now, uh, ready for everybody to to take a look at. But I'd like to talk about the basic. Uh, smarty cam concept you know what is what is a smarty cam you know some of you may know some of these things but uh, we'll always throw in little bits of information that you may not know so but uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about what it is Robbie if you could uh, maybe just give us an idea of smarty cam what does it do what why what is the value of this uh, to, to the to the motorsports enthusiast uh, I always like to explain the smarty cam as as taking the racer out of the media um, because that that's what we're trying to do here. We're we're setting um, we're setting triggered commands for automatically starting and stopping the the camera for recording. We're embedding the the data and video uh, in real time so that it's it's already done when the when the SD card comes out. We're offering um, um, automatic power on, automatic power off, and a uh, a charging function when it's connected to our system. So the idea is that once it's installed and configured, you don't touch it anymore. You get in your car, it starts recording when when the, the data logger starts recording or, or when speed is above a certain threshold. Mm -hmm. above. You, you have these parameters, once they're met, it records and at the end you come out, take your helmet off and you watch your video with your data embedded over it. So that, how I, I many times have I forgot to turn on cameras and like that's my sole responsibility in some applications is to make sure I hit the GoPro button yeah. um, and that's just not a thing with a smarty cam you know it's out of my head completely it's probably why I'm so bad at doing it with the others <laughs> that, that that was such a huge um thing early on when people were starting to use a lot of video in in their race cars in their race vehicles and um 
the, when you would get done, uh, we've all seen those stories or had it happen to us where you where you go to turn on the camera and you hit the snapshot mode instead <laughs> and you've got your thumb or your your, your big over exaggerated face as a single shot and no video and that that is a big part of smarty cam that that the uh, the automation is there uh, we all it's motorsports right or it's a, it's a track day it's whatever it happens to be but the stress level is high right at that exact moment and uh you you're you're trying to make sure your helmet is buckled and you're you know, you're, you've got your car ready to go and you you know they've given you the five minute warning uh, you know seven minutes ago and you're uh, you're trying to get in your car and turning on your camera is is low on that list i'm afraid so right. brick brick what do you see as some of the the, the concepts that uh, that as you're talking with folks and, and in your own experience uh things that um that that you find really kind of cool about the smarty cam uh, well, I mean, the other thing that's really cool about it is uh, just it takes the information that, you know, normally a data guy would have to get from the driver. It takes that out of the equation because you can go back and watch the video and see what was actually going on. So there might be some cases where the driver doesn't remember exactly what happened or maybe is a little, you know, not wanting to share that information uh, as it exactly happened. Um, but you can go back and like, if there's something, an oddity in the data, like where, you know, we slowed down, you can't tell why you can go back and watch the video and you say, oh, you know, this person spun in front of him or, uh, oh, there's, you know, heavy traffic through there. You had to avoid this person kind of thing. Um, and to that point, the, the other thing that we've recently added that, that makes it an incredibly powerful tool is that uh, with any of the newer stuff, we can automatically sync the video and data. So when all that stuff is uh, downloaded into Race Studio 3, um, it's automatically GPS timestamped and you can go back and look, you know, scrubbing along through the, the data traces and also having the video side by side with it perfectly synced up. Yeah, the, uh, the a couple of a couple of other little things that are that, that kind of cover the concept side of this is it's designed to be used with um, with aim loggers to to do some of the stuff that both of you have talked about, you know, starting up, uh, charging, uh, keeping the batteries up, uh, turning it on and off, all of those kind of things. But they also can be used standalone. Let, let's say you don't have an aim logger, you, you we can uh, you know plug in power to it and and have it be a standalone. It can be plugged into uh, you know three of them at least. Not the sport it can be plugged into ECUs directly. So you have you have some options there that are very very powerful in the, in the way that it's been put together, and that uh, that concept of storing the you know data with the video has been something that uh, started with the with the 2.2 models uh, at some level and has been taken to a whole nother level on the on the smarty cam 3. Uh, I heard a story recently where they were using a uh, where, where a, a team was using a, a dual um, in, in the 24 hours of Daytona in preparation for it and their uh, their they had a, a different data system in the car and the data system had a problem and uh, did not get data for you know some of their practice sessions the but then the uh the the video system had a had a chip there so everything that they didn't just have the video but they were able to pull in you know, speed throttle you know, all the basic data elements and they were able to engineer the car and certainly help out the drivers in preparation for for the the 24 hours of daytona this year uh, based on data that came out of the video what they really purchased for a video only uh, solution, but they were getting data, and that's uh, that is very powerful and a, and a, and a very cool tool. So, um, Brick also mentioned uh, that it, there is a lot of learning that can happen from a data element by just pulling out that uh, that memory chip, putting it in to your computer, opening it up, and you haven't even got to Race Studio three yet for the analysis, but opening it up, um, especially for drivers that uh, learn visually. Where they, you've got your date. You can see when they were on the throttle, on the brakes. You can see what the RPM was, what gear position, speeds, and you're just watching the video with that real-time data overlay. That is, that is super powerful. And uh, I see dads all over the, all over North America in our in our area here, where they uh, they may look at the data, and the kid is starting to learn a little bit about the data. But that video, 
uh, especially with junior drivers and guys like me that really see things visually, the, you, uh, you, you watch the video and you can, uh, and you pick up not just the line and, and all of those things, but you've got those graphical elements to really help uh, young drivers learn quickly. So that's a, that's a, that's a very powerful, powerful piece of that. And to catch non-intuitive things. Um, I think the first time I really fell in love with video was uh, uh, early on in the, uh, I think it was Playboy Cup, the MX-5 series, um, and before it became Global MX-5, but we were using the Smarty Cams there and having a hard time understanding why the speed was increasing for certain cars on the back straight or, or on the front straight of Road America as they cross the start finish line. So they come out of the turn and they're going uphill, but there was like these speed differences and I couldn't account for it. These are all spec cars. Um, and so we, we had some video and I'm watching a car from 14 car lengths away, just start sucking up to, to the rest of the pack. And it was, I mean, from 14, 15 car lengths away was phenomenal that he was able to get into some type of like reduced coefficient to drag. And it just sucked him right into the rest of the cars, uh, increasing his speed by three, four miles an hour. Like I would have never uh, thought that 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 type of distance. Engaged. Yeah, <laughs> really. Slingshot, <laughs> slingshot engaged. The the draft on those cars, they had no roof, uh, and because of that, uh, they were huge parachutes. And once, boy, you get just a sniff of the draft, and it, yep. and, it and it was huge. And you, those are the things that are, like, as Robbie points out, those you see things in the data, but you don't. Sometimes, you know, we live in a world of why is, is a term that I always use, and okay, the speed went up for these three cars. It, it, why? And, and there's certain times you can't find that in the data. You, you can assume some things and you can, you know, perceive some things, but uh, having that, uh, that next element of the video is a, is, is a big deal. It helped out in, in Robbie's case there, obviously. So um, uh, perfect. There, there, there's a couple of other things about the Smarty Cam that I'd like to talk, you know, technically about a little bit. The, um, the, the first one is the lens. Uh, I want to talk about files and file sizes and, and a little bit of, of that. There's, a, there's always some discussion of that, but let's start off with the lens and the, and the, uh, the global shutter. Uh, Robbie, if you could cover a little bit on the technical side of uh, what, is your, what is your one minute pitch of what is the global shutter and what does it do and why is it special in, uh, in, in these uh, per performance motorsports cameras? That's uh it's probably the best application that I know of for a uh, motorsports application or anything that has a, a high vibration uh, or high, high, uh, high movement. Because with a standard shutter, you have a, an aperture that's opening and closing and it's dictating your, your frame rate. Um, but you can get to these harmonic um, uh, similarities, like you see a tire that's rotating and then it starts rotating backwards. Or uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure we've all seen the wave in some of the videos where um, as they approach a certain RPM, the, the camera video just starts waving. Um, and that's basically the, the vibrations matching the frame rate. So you're getting a bounce in your video. Um, with the, uh, the CMOS imager, it's always open. It's a global shutter that's constantly open. And we're just taking snippets um, at a dictated frame rate. So the wave effect is not apparent at all. It's not present in the video because we don't have that aperture setting to, to deal with. It, it makes for a much better motorsports camera. Yeah, the, um, as I understand it too, the, the global is exactly as Robbie mentioned it, that there is some uh, very high tech things that are done. That they're looking at things at the pixel level. And if that pixel didn't change, location or color or, or anything about it then then the uh the rewrite to to the to the video is is reduced by that right so there is yeah. which which helps us a ton on file size and uh but there's processing happening because of that obviously and then the other the the piece on that um uh on, on the lens itself and the way that it picks it up if you if you if you think about the some of the other cameras that are out there, they they do a swipe you know, 60 times per second instead of having it open and, and then grabbing the information. And every time they swipe, it's it's approximately a 45 degree angle. And if you if the vibrations are such, or if you're turning a a real sharp corner, you can see that uh, things are changing degrees. quickly in front of you that when it swipes here, the bottom hasn't hasn't taken that shot yet, right yet. So it's coming across and you'll have that straight up that power pole or a light pole or a, you know, whatever it happens to be. And it ends up having this big bend in it because 
of the swipe coming across the lens and and the global shutter uh, you know, takes care of that so everything is true and, and modeled much much better obviously uh, true to the world so uh, brick you have anything to add to that uh, with, with some of your experiences as well uh no i think i'm i think i'm good on that okay the um the, the the last couple things that i'd like to talk about in this in this area before we jump into the to the actual models is uh, some of the stuff that we've gotten kind of used to with our loggers but the the automatic track selection let's say you've got a graphic for the track in in your upper corner that you want to uh you want to show you know that when you show up at the track, the GPS sensor knows where you're at, and and some of those things are 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 automated uh, to some level, which is which, which is really good, and um, uh, being charged by the logger, all of these different things. So the, the the last one that I want to talk about is the user configurable overlays, uh, and this is across the board on all all four models. Is inside of Race Studio three when you select. Um, you know, you create a new configuration for a smarty cam, you have a bunch of tabs that are set up there with different uh, overlays and you build those, you drag and drop around your screen wherever you wish. You can bring in um, logos from uh, from your business or your race team or whatever it happens to be and, and have that all built in there. There's some things that I just, I tend to like to put on mine all the time. I tend to like to put the date and the time uh, in Race Studio 3, when it's synced with the data that is such a powerful thing, of course, your data has the date and the time in it. But if you watch that video uh, uh, standalone, you share the video with somebody, it is nice to know, you know, which session that was based on the, the date and the time. But uh, it's really up to the end user. End user can build some of those and, and uh, in, in any way they wish and, and change them. You know, you can store multiple configurations on the gauge and, and, and change those as you wish as well. So that's a very powerful tool. Let's talk a little bit, um, and maybe Brick, maybe you can uh, start off the conversation on this. These sure. are these are um, the, these cameras are putting out a, a lot of information, and they're they're working with data, and they're working with these overlays, and they're working, of course, building the video. And uh, and, and let's talk a little bit about the cards, the the memory cards that are going to go onto them. The um, of course, the sport takes the micro SD card and all, the other three all take a, a regular size SD card. But what's important about cards? What do you find? Where, where do the errors happen? Where, where do problems happen? And, and how can people stay away from those problems? <laughs> yeah, so this is, uh, this is really important to me because uh, it makes it so the users have less problems and then my job is easier. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is. There is a lot going on with these cameras. Um, there's a lot that goes into the data. It's not, it's not the same as a lot of other video cameras where you have video and audio because we're also adding in the overlays and also metadata for you know, the data that's being recorded as well as the GPS timestamps, different video logs, that sort of thing. Um, so the SD card is really important. Um, the first thing with the SD cards is the size. Um, so the Smarty Cam 3s can do up to two terabytes. If you don't need two terabytes, don't use two terabytes. Um, and the reason for that is because if it's got two terabytes, um, it, 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 you know, all you have all the available memory there, but it has to check all that available memory and all of that space to write it. Um, so usually I recommend using the smallest size that you can without having to change the car out as often. So yeah, you can go up to two terabytes if you need to, if you're doing uh, some, you know, really long endurance racing or something like that. Um, other than that, um, you know, usually stick to 32, 64 is usually good for, for most people. Um, you definitely want to use a good quality video card. So, you know, SanDisk is, is usually uh, my go-to, but basically any of the, any of the good name brands, um, it needs to be a class 10 SD card. Um, and the other thing that's really important is not to use the adapters. So like if you have a micro SD that's going into one of our cameras that uh, takes a full size SD card, um, there are adapters there. It doesn't matter what brand it is. They're all poorly made and they all in motorsports situations will see some vibrations and more than likely uh, cause some, some FOF files. So some, some data being corrupted basically from the, the micro SD getting wiggled around in the adapter. Uh, so that's usually a problem. So um, with all the, the threes, uh, those all take full size SD cards, except for the sport and that'll use a, a micro SD. Yeah, and, and the replacement okay. factor for 
uh, for most of these cards, when you're buying a two terabyte card and it putting it into an application that is very rough and dirty and um, it's going to wear much faster than if it were just in your computer or in a DSLR, for example. Um, so this the you purchasing a two terabyte card and having to replace it uh, in a couple of months is a much harder pill to swallow than buying a 64 gig card with the same write speed and quality and replacing it every, or having a couple of them. Yeah, and then just you just swapping cards so that you can collect data, put in a new card, go review data, and then you just have two or three alternating cards. That, that uh, as, you were, as you were mentioning that, where you ended is where it was something that was very important to me. <clears throat> something I share a lot. Don't buy the, the 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 really large cars. Rather, it's better to have two or three. Uh, I I tend to go to the track if I'm going to go. I tend to have four cards, right? And uh, so when you're pulling one out of the camera, buy smaller ones, high quality, 32 to 64 gigabytes. And then when you pull one out, put in another one, right? And then close the close the door. Uh, it has happened to me more than I care to admit where I've pulled the card out and I've went, okay, as soon as I copy that uh, video off the card, I'm going to go right back out and stick it back in the car. And the car is rolling off for the next session. And then I, and I look in the back window and the little door is open, right? Because I, and I forgot to put the card in it. So uh, I always travel with the, uh, with, with multiple cards and I just, and I swap them out and, uh, and, and you can do that. You can afford to do that much easier when, when you're not buying the, the very large cards. So, uh, and in your normal, I, I don't have the, I did some calculations. I found a bunch of uh, Smarty Cam 3 video files, like 25 of them. And, uh, and I just started, it's going to vary because of just the way these videos are built the stuff I mentioned earlier about replacing pixels and, and, and different things. But so for file size versus time is not a constant, but it's fairly close. And, um, and I don't remember the numbers, but it's uh, uh, like a 32 gigabyte card is going to give you 12 plus hours of, 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 of video, right? So your normal uh, at the track where you go out and do a session or two, you're, you're, uh, you do not need a, a two terabyte card, right? You, you, the, the, the smaller cards uh, really fit that, uh, that best balance of price versus size versus quality, right? That triangle of, of what's important in a card. And then being able to afford enough of them to, to, to not worry about you know, replacing those as you do it. And then there's a lot of users that tell us that, um, uh, that uh, memory, uh, they do wear out, right? Not just the not just the pins and the sliders, but uh, just like any other piece of memory, you're writing to it and taking it off, writing to it and taking it off. And you know, some of the pros that I talk to that use our stuff, um, they just automatically swap out new cards uh, either yearly or ab about halfway through the season for the. And that's another reason to use uh, ones that aren't quite so large and quite so spendy. Has uh, uh, Brick or Robbie, have you uh, you concur with? with uh, swapping those out at some point uh, or, or problems that you may see because of that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, m most of the time, the, the problems that I see with uh, corrupt video files are, are either due to the SD card or due to interference. Um, one thing I did want to add, though, is I think it's about eight gigs an hour. Uh, eight gigs an hour. Time on, the, on the 1080, 60 frames per second. Videos. Okay. Probably a lot of my testing was done with uh, Smarty Cam 3 Sport files, so it uh, probably it's certainly smaller. Uh, that's the, rough estimate too. Let, it can let, vary yeah. depending on. Do your own testing. Those that. of you that yeah. uh, that have them and your that you have the units, just uh, make a few videos and uh, you know after the first weekend or so, you're going to have a really good handle of what the amount of time that you can uh, get onto a card and then and then kind of uh, adjust accordingly. So, um, the uh, let let's talk a little bit. Uh, about the Smarty, Smarty Camp family. Yeah, maybe Robbie, you can take a take a first crack at this. We have four of them here. Let's talk about the, the Sport, the Corsa, the GP, and the Dual, all of which are available now. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what each one is and, and what they're designed for and, uh, and, and where maybe they even fit in you know, outside of what they're designed for. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the different models and what's different about them. Well, um... We'll start with the Sport. The Sport was the first of the family line that we released, um, and it has a a smaller a smaller form factor than any of our other cameras have have had previously. So uh, the cost is also uh, reduced to a price point that is uh, uh, very very economical to run uh, 
multiple. It doesn't have the full aluminum housing and it doesn't have a, a beefy battery and this is and it doesn't use an SD card, it uses a micro SD card and it's all in an effort to reduce the size platform um, and, and the overall cost of, of the unit. This is a great um, option for a, a slave system, something that is going to connect to one of our master devices and it's going to have a constant power feed as well as data being pushed towards the, the camera system at all times. It's not meant for standalone application or to set it up a, in, in an application to without power. It's not gonna last for very long. Uh, it has it, been a bit of a change for some some folks that uh, our, our our cameras in the past did have a little bit more battery life, but this one really was designed to be a small and compact and and uh, and the battery really is for setting up a, a couple of quick menu items or something. It's meant to be like, meant to be powered by so yeah, the battery's fairly small. It's so uh, tiny. So what's it designed? To, uh, what uh, it talk the document I've got here is right off of the RA uh, website designed for. Uh, karting mainly is kind of where it's uh it's sweet spot really is but club racing cars and motorcycles you know where uh things like that as well right Robbie I think I think it's fantastic for for any application where the data logging system is ours um oh. and and that's for cars boat bikes boats any any application just the cost of entry is low um and it gives you you're not you're not sacrificing um uh, quality uh, or overlay or data or anything by by purchasing this camera because you're having the heavy lifting being done by our data logging systems. Whereas the Corsa, the GP, and the Dual, they all offer a standalone feature where, where they they manage ECU integration or um, uh, you know multi, larger battery lives and and things like that. So that they're they're designed for either or standalone or integration with within the AIM ecosystem. And the Corsa basically is 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 replacing the the, the Smarty Cam that, that we've uh, that we've all kind of got used to that standalone unit, right? Uh, two point one HD. The, the two point one yeah. and the uh, and it's designed, you know, in, in this world, the the Sport is kind of a new level of camera that we we've had, but the the Corsa is replacing one that we already have, designed mainly touring and sports cars is what it's kind of talked about. Uh, Brick, maybe you can talk a little bit about the um, the to continue on with that, the, the frames per second and, 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 and some more of the technical details. Yeah, so uh, two things to, to note, I guess, about the difference between the Sport and the, the rest of them is that uh, all of them are 1080p 60 frames per second, except for the Sport, which is 30 frames per second. Um, and then all of the other ones other than the Sport are able to uh, directly connect to uh, a car's ECU. So. Uh, those of you guys have been around AIM stuff for a while know that we uh, used to have to do a, a separate module for that, an ECU bridge, um, but now that's all been integrated into uh, the course of GP and Dual themselves. So that makes it uh, a little bit easier. And then, uh, yeah, the, the Corsa is uh, taking the place basically of the, uh, the outgoing, or I guess already out, uh, Smarty Cam 2.1 HD. And a fun fact about the Corsa is I actually named it. <laughs> there's a story there somewhere in yeah yeah uh, <laughs> very proud of that very very proud of that the um but the form factor and everything about it is very close to the smarty cam 2.1 if you've had those in your car before yeah. the, it's going to fit into the same spot it's going to you know it takes the same uh you know uh, ball mount uh, underneath it uh where it, and and connect to your same ram mount typically what a lot of people a lot of people use right um, yeah, uh, Robbie. One more thing as we as we kind of move on to the GP uh, external microphones. Uh, uh, the documentation here shows that uh, some can do that, uh, and the, the sport is just not designed to to do that as well. Right. It's um, all of them have an internal microphone built in, um, and the uh, three Corsa GP and Dual have the option to run an external microphone as well, and that's to um, get it get the sound uh, origination from a a better location sometimes in in cars will they'll be mounted in a location that just you you have a whole bunch of wind noise um or or the exhaust load is overly drowning or uh, x you know, put it next to suspension and it just squeaks all, all the time and it's that could be quite annoying as well so uh you can you can basically or radio inputs yeah 
Uh, it's also a fantastic uh, option. So we do that quite a bit with uh, uh, the external microphone being hooked up to the radio communications and the internal microphone providing audio and the tracks will lay on top of each other so that we have both at the same time. So the GP, what's the difference between the Corsa and the GP and where, where are the, the, the different areas that you might use those two? A big one is, is just the form factor. So the course is going to be an all-in-one unit. Um, it's It's got the LCD, the uh, lens, the battery, the SD card, the buttons, everything contained into one solidary unit. And the GP is an isolated bullet camera. So uh, that's main differences where you would use one. The course fits well into a closed cockpit car and the GP fits well into an open wheel vehicle where you can just mount the bullet camera at the on the hoop or somewhere into the airstream where we're concerned about the size or um, or maybe getting in the way of a driver in a single cockpit vehicle uh, the the gp lends better to that with the isolated camera mount uh, but the gp uh, they both have the, the ecu integration capabilities the gp has the option to run um, uh, 3g S, sdi output so we can actually export this data with overlay built into it and into a uh, into another device that is going to be streaming for you. So um, the, the normal approach would be like SDI output into a video encoder. And that video encoder then goes to some type of um, uh, wireless transmitting devices. And there's, there's a bunch out there. Uh, but we can we just have to encode the video and then push it out um, to to YouTube, Twitch, uh, Facebook or any of the other services that actually offer like some of the overlays um, that you can enhance on top of it. So OBX and things like that. And the GP and the dual are the only ones that have that SDI out. Is that That's correct? correct. Okay. Yeah. So if live streaming is something that you think is in your future as you're uh, thinking about which which model you may want to get, uh, the GP and the dual are the ones that are uh, have that functionality built into them for the now it works now, but uh, it will we'll be there in the future. Um, uh, Brick, tell us a little bit about your experience with with the with the dual the 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 the, the tagline there designed for the most demanding <laughs> racer is uh, is what it is and it's it is our most powerful powerful unit and uh, and it uh, does a lot and uh, give us a little bit of background on the dual. Yeah, the the dual is the uh, the Mac Daddy. That's what you get when you want to flex on all the other racers, right? So uh, the dual is, is basically a GP on steroids. Um, it does also have the SDI out so you can live stream from it, um, but obviously called the dual because there are two bullet cam inputs for it. Um, and those, those bullet cam inputs um, are automatically done picture in picture. Um, so that way, you know, you don't have to worry about doing any of that in post. Um, makes it really easy if you want to have, you know, one, usually the, the way to do it is to have one forward facing camera and then to use the secondary one either as a, you know, like a, a behind camera or uh, perhaps focused on what the, the driver is doing, what his hands are doing, what feet are doing, something along those lines. Um, and then, yeah, the software automatically uh, compiles that video and overlays it so that you have a picture in picture. Uh, as well as uh, all the other overlays and stuff that you have set up. But uh, that's been really handy. I actually uh, I did some, some testing with one of the duels with uh, Vermont Sports Car, who does uh, all of uh, Subaru's rally cars, and they had some really cool video that came out of that. Robbie, there was a question there, right? The uh, <laughs> and a question and answer, and I thought you, know, Robbie, uh, laugh, laughs about it a little bit. The um, uh, the Autosport connection. What is uh, what is that uh, connector? Yeah. What what is the actual connector? It's a 22 pin auto sport. 20, uh, it's funny yeah. because I'm looking it up right now for the uh, uh, the mil spec code, but I, uh, yeah, 22 pin though, and yeah, that's it's 22 pin. Yeah, yeah, and that and that just makes the, because the the dual is so powerful and it can do so much and so many inputs that uh, you know, obviously that's a uh, that's the way we need to go. So yeah. Uh, perfect. That has a harness similar to like if you guys are familiar with like our MX series dashes, it's very similar to that, where there's a, actually an auto sport connector and motorsports grade harness coming out of it. It's exactly it's the exact same 22 pin harness that we use for the secondary harnesses of all of our data logging systems for perfect. the MXX or Evo category. Perfect, perfect. So the um, 
a, a couple of other things that I'd like to chat about before we start getting into to, to some more of the question and answer. Uh, I kind of skipped over it real quickly, but uh, let's go back in time a little bit in, in history. And uh, AIM has been at this for, for quite some time. And uh, uh, Brick is holding up, uh, Brick may have to talk in, in order to get the camera to show to him, but he's holding up our very first data product, which was a David. A David. Uh, the uh, data and video was was together. Uh, Brick, talk a little bit about that. Uh, that little, I know you weren't around when we were well, actually really using them, right? But so I'm not looking for technical details, but if you don't talk, the camera won't be on you. So uh, right, show, right, show right. everybody so, what it looks like. So uh, this is the David. Uh, this is like, uh, my understanding, this was way before my time at AIM, but uh, this was uh, AIM's first uh, foray into getting into the video game. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite big. <laughs> I don't really know much else yeah. about it. Uh, Robbie knows a little bit more than I do, but uh, there, how I've been talking so you can actually see it. It was wonderfully before its time. Um, <laughs> I mean, it had, uh, so David is data and video put together. Um, <laughs> that's, that's the name. Um, and and it, it offered a uh, analog channel inputs. It offered um, a dual camera option. So we had picture in picture. Uh, the frame rate, or not the frame rate, the, uh, the resolution, I cannot remember. It's like 264 by. <laughs> we're, talking, yeah. we're talking that was. Uh, this is early 2000. Available two, two, yeah, 2000, probably four or five. Yeah. Uh, we um, had one in our MX5 cup car. Right. But, but we couldn't figure out the memory control for it. So that was like an external device that we had to um, send send video out of the system and record it. And we were using at the time like Compact Flash, which to me, it just reminded me of like a small Nintendo cartridge. And this is dating myself, but I mean, the, the size of this thing to plug it in uh, and, and just setting it up was, was uh, quite difficult. Um, getting all the cables, the right cables, the, the right components for all the different things to, to interface. But it was, it was a, a vision of the future. This it was the way first ahead camera. Of, yeah. way ahead of its time way ahead of its time the um uh so that was about 2004 2005 and then and then went to a different direction and, and came out with the very first smarty cam and i thought i would uh thought i had one of the i actually i think i do have a david uh, as well john Weis, weisberg uh, mentions he still has one but then then was the uh was the original smarty cam and uh you know some the cabling and the and the the s SD card and the uh, and the GPS sensor built built into it, and uh, and of course the lens kind of a lot of people would call this the torpedo style. When I'm talking with users, they'll they'll remember it that way. But this was quite an innovation, and and in such a small package, this was a this was again a, a very very uh, forward looking, and uh, and ended up being a very very powerful tool. Uh, used a lot of these. Obviously, everybody was using them, but I, I used them. That was in an era when, when my son and I were doing a lot of off-road racing, and this one here made a made many many miles in an off-road race car, and and be totally covered with mud and and still working. You know, you try to try to cover the lens a little bit here and there, but uh, this was the original uh, the the original one, and it uh, was very powerful, and and uh, and that's where we have gone. That 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 came out in two thousand and nine. And then just to give you an idea about the, the rundown of some of the rest of them that we won't talk about deeply, but we had the first SmartyCam HD was, uh, it was in 2013. And then uh, SmartyCam HD uh, 2.1, uh, 2015, another uh, enhancement with 2.2 .2 in 2018. And then the current lineup uh, started to come out May of 22, we, uh, the SmartyCam Sport uh, was available. And then uh, the dual in, uh, December of 2022, uh, just five, five, six months ago. Uh, March 2023, the, the GP came out a month or so ago. And then, uh, and then just recently, the course uh, is now available here in, uh, in April. So we've got the full lineup now uh, that, that is available for everybody. So um, anything you'd like to add on, on any of those things, fellas, as we, as we get ready to start taking some questions from the Q&A? Well, we do have quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you going to bring up the SSD? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a that's a really interesting. Go ahead, Brick. Let, give us a little bit that's, of an idea on uh, on that internal well, memory thought. Yeah, so that's something that isn't necessarily one hundred percent available yet, but something that we're working on. And I actually have right here the pro version of the GP. Now, right now, this is 
for IndyCar only. So uh, for those of you who don't know, we are spec'd into uh, IndyCar and Indy NXT uh, as the official camera. And uh, the pro versions for these cameras have a 64 gigabyte solid state drive internal. Uh, and that's in addition to having the, the oh, let me hold this right there. So you can actually see it. Uh, that's in addition to actually having the, uh, the SD card slot. So uh, basically, it's a built-in redundancy. Um, it makes it for, you know, uh, Indy cards probably have some of the harshest conditions even in racing. And uh, it just makes it so, you know, if there's a big crash or excessive vibration or something that causes the, the SD card file to have a problem, um, that video is still backed up on the solid state drive uh, and, and can be pulled from there. So it's a, a built-in redundancy that, that uh, helps you from losing your uh, losing your video, or if you forget to put an SD card in. <laughs> so that's yeah. uh, that's uh, you know in the works for uh, I, I think uh, as an option uh, that will be available on the regular cameras further down the line. Perfect, perfect. Let's talk. Uh, let, let's take a few questions. We've we've got about fifteen minutes of, uh, of of doing some of these. One of the ones that stood out to me that either one of you can answer: What compression do these use? And the Apex AV systems talk H two six four, H two six five. Any of you have a good understanding of the difference between those and which ones we actually use? Mm, I'm not on my. I, I think it's two sixty five, but, I, I, yeah, but right. uh, it's in some documentation that I uh, that I had around. But one of the folks will find it as we uh, as we dig that up. Um, the uh, external uh, mic required. The um, there's a couple questions or mentions of that. The, um, of course, that was only the course of the GP and the dual, the, the three higher ones. I have found that uh, the, the sound quality is, is generally speaking, is good right out of the box without even an external microphone. There is uh, the only time, and Robbie mentioned it, it was a little bit of if you get it right over by a, wind, uh, a window or you're in an area where the wind is buffeting around the camera, you end up with some wind noise. Uh, so some people will... Uh, just generally just do the remote microphone and place it into let's say you're in a sedan and they they can tuck it up underneath the up underneath the dash or uh, in, in the back somewhere where there's no wind yet they're getting the, the throatiness of the exhaust that's what they wanted right so um, uh, typically uh, I have found that uh, the external microphone wasn't necessarily needed but uh, we, we have that option if, if wanted and the biggest one and I one I did all the time is uh, we brought in the the team communications into that and just put a put a scanner in the car and plug that into it and so then the video was real time of uh, the, the, sometimes it wasn't very, uh, very, hey, how many edits, how many edits did you, yeah. you have to go or, in there? Beep. Or beep. a normal race team, maybe that's okay. But when you have a, a son driving and a, and a dad talking to him on the radio, sometimes that gets, uh, you know, maybe a little bit, uh, uh more personal than probably, not to get. but, uh, you know, shut up and drive, Jeez, what the, but, uh, but, but you're driving like aunt, Mar aunt Marge. <laughs> Exactly. One of the things that we did a lot, though, and really, really helped us as as the driver needed to be pulled different areas right off right after an event, and, and I couldn't get my uh, uh, my my feedback from him on the car on the cool down lap as as he was running around uh, while it was fresh in his mind before other things other functions had to happen, he would just push the button and talk on his way around. Uh, turn three, uh, I, I struggled right here, and it was on the video, him talking about it, and he could actually place the car and do and, and talk through issues that he had. Uh, no, it's right off the was top fresh of in his, his mind, right? So that I could watch the video back, even though I couldn't get a hold of him because of whatever he needed to do, I was able to get the information I needed to start making changes and, and things like that. That was very, very valuable to me. So, um, perfect. The um, is, will there be continued support for the older Smarty Cam? Robbie, give us a give us. A, we as a company probably have a policy on on all of our uh, legacy equipment, right? Yeah, I think if you've been a customer of ours for uh, for a long time and seen generational changes of hardware, um, you've noticed that we've we've gone above and beyond, or we we strive to go above and beyond to keep the systems that are currently out there uh, happy and healthy. So uh, we offer no labor or diagnostic fees for services and and 
our parts are legitimately at cost. It's what it costs us to repair them is what it's going to take to, to get this system fixed. So we, we want them out there and we want them to continue running. I mean, we still fix MXLs. Uh, we have one on the, on the tech bench right now that was brought to my attention because it needed a 3.5 millimeter jack and the technician had never seen it before. Um, so, so there's just these, we, we try our best sometimes, and especially with the, MX, uh, MXX 1.0s and 1.2s, the reason we're changing them is because of this massive um, chip shortage that everyone's experiencing. And some of the chips are just no longer available, making it really difficult for us to produce uh, new systems as well as service old systems. So if we can do it, we absolutely will. Yeah. And that is even on the, uh, the, the, you mentioned it, but the, the, Heck, those MXLs were were available first in in late 2003, early 2004, and uh, and if we can get the parts, we're going to do everything we can to to repair it and get it back out there. They're so robust and so strong, and and uh, and still serving people very well. So um, the um, uh, let, uh, Brick, I would like to have you chat a little bit. There's a question here talking about startup and and uh, there, there's some strategies and it's user definable. Don't no reason to go through all of them, but just give an idea of if is a smarty cam gets ready and, and the logger is 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 driving that. Uh, what, what what are some of the strategies that you hear about? When does it start up? When does it start recording? Stop recording and shut off. Right. Give us give us an idea of some of the different ways that people do that. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, I guess we'll assume that we're uh, using it in conjunction with an aim logger. Yeah. Um, so each one of the aim loggers is going to have its own strategy that you can set up uh, for it, the, its own recording parameters. Um, and then the camera you can set to, so it's, it's automatically going to come on when it sees power to the logger it's connected to. Um, and then uh, you can set the cameras up to start recording by logger command, which means that when the logger they're connected to starts recording, the camera will also start recording. Um, there's also an accelerometer threshold that you can set it to. So basically once the camera starts getting thrown around, uh, it, it will know to start recording. Um, and you can also set it up to uh, GPS speed. Um, so basically once it exceeds a, a GPS speed threshold, it starts recording. Um, the, the two ways that I like to do it best are logger command, just because that's pretty much foolproof. It's, it just works. Um, and then also uh, GPS speed is good if you're trying to get rid of all that excess, you know, fluff video that you get driving around the paddock and stuff, you know, the, the logger is recording, but you're not actually out on track and, and stuff like that. So if you, if you set it to a GPS you know, speed of like 30 miles an hour, you're probably not going to see that in the paddock. So it's actually only going to be recording when you're out on track. Yeah, the, the, those strategies are, are are very personal in nature. It, it, to me, it was always I was okay with some small videos that run you know run around the paddock or over to the over to tech or you know whatever. It, it would create a video if you did the data data logger you know, driven by the data logger, and um, it wasn't the end of the world to me. I I liked it was just extra video. I could get rid of it. You can see by the file size which one was the actual event, and I just would pull those off the card and and uh, eventually just delete the shorter ones. But a lot of people like to have um, only the races be done and then you do the speed, the, the, the speed turns it on, anything above 30 miles an hour is that, that's what starts it. The trouble is, is um, you know, maybe you have a long yellow flag or something or even a red flag. And then it takes a while for the camera to, to turn on and then since the 30 go through the boot process and then, and then start going again and you may miss um, you know, half of the warm up lap get, you know, coming back to the green or something. So, uh, and then other ones are standing starts. And uh, so you end up with how do I make sure that we got a, you know, a standing start? So you have to create your, the, the aim logger to be gathering data, not just on speed, but maybe on RPM. So it's driving the, the camera to be running all the time for these standing start type events. So it's really personalized, but. Uh, trust us, give us a call, uh, drop us a note, and we can help you get those things kind of figured out if you, if you can't figure it out on your own. It'll come down to a combination of uh, what type of racing and personal preference, yep, but exactly. it all works really well. We have enough functionality there to make that to, to make that happen. <laughs> a question that I did not, I do not know the answer to was was in here. It was uh, talking about the dual and, uh, and, and different field of view cameras. Uh, what is the, uh, can we mix and match on those mix two? Mix and match them. You can yeah. mix and match them, perfect. Yeah. 
Uh, so we, we don't sell any kits that have them already mixed, but uh, if you buy an extra bullet cam or uh, or just have two systems that you want to switch to with you, they, they certainly work. You can ask uh, Matt Romanowski in the comments. He's done it with a few customers already, I believe. Okay. How many cameras is it possible to connect? Uh, that's a... Uh, on what the about? dual, yeah, but what if you on the, on the dual? The, oh, if you're doing or... multiple, uh, yeah, officially from well, maybe Robbie has a better answer, but I think officially two. Yeah, it's two. Uh, but without injecting, supported. without injecting additional power um, yeah. on the supply bus, so they're they're power hungry, and we can only do so much with the uh, data connection that we provide from our data loggers. So an external data hub with uh, a data hub with external power would inject the necessary power to run multiples at that point you can run uh, a substantial amount of cameras when we have a larger amperage to to deal with it was my understanding that that was uh i think there was an artificial limit of something like eight that it would, eight, would yeah. actually run but nobody's going to put that many but <laughs> the robbie's point of being that the power is delivered through two of these pins right but positive and negative on two of the five five pin connector and um and if you stack those into the aim uh can and power uh, network you know th these cameras can take a little bit of power to do what they do right. so if, if you're going to run more you have to uh there there are ways to add power uh, near that source right uh, into a, a data hub uh, an additional external source of power so yeah and a lot of it so so there's the especially for the, these cameras is there's actually two charging mechanisms um, there's the vb and vb ext so one of them is to uh, initially wake up camera and provide voltage uh, one of them is to run the camera operations and function and then we have a ground um, but then you also have to think all of our systems come with gps modules and that needs power and that's going to plug into it or channel expansions tc hubs depending on what's on the buses it's like this dynamic uh number so there's a fixed amount of current and depending on what you have plugged in we may need to augment that with external power and it's doable but again it's going to yeah. be very personalized in mm -hmm. your system in your car so give us a holler if, if you're running into those uh, those areas uh kyle asked a question there is there a streaming video out to the, to the web live kyle we we did chat about that about 30 minutes ago and uh, uh absolutely the uh the gp and the and the dual are both capable of that now um uh, sdi sdi i think uh, out. sdi yep, yep. Um, so yeah we, we we provide the the necessary outlet to uh get that video out there is still like an encoder box that's needed for the actual live streaming process just to... and there's there is so many different kits um out there to tackle this project i mean we have i have been looking at ranges from 300 dollars all the way up to three three to six thousand dollars for for just different packages that can handle this type of thing and and i don't have a great uh per, personal recommendation right now there's just so many out there that we still have yet to test and yet to do so we're we're playing around with a lot of different uh manufacturers of products to to just offer our personal recommendation for it yeah and it's just not a ma mature thing yet right there there the 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 technology is still uh, sorting itself out uh and we'll uh, it's external outside of our of our area but when we f we uh find good solutions we'll make sure we share them Mm -hmm. um uh stefan asked a question that uh, that we uh, that i have heard of in, in older ones and i'm sure it's the same here is even though the smarty cam is hard, hardwired into the car why do we still have to periodically charge that unit and mm -hmm. and uh either one of you uh talk about it, it's been sitting in the shop and and everything's been powered down and it's and it's got the small battery um it's better to charge that unit up before you go to a weekend than the the logger will the aim logger will 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 give it enough charge and running you know power to yeah. run but it's good to, to start a weekend with charge what do you have to add about that yeah it's for i mean for me it's it's just the nature of the camera system you have a a, a timer function that's set into the camera and it can be as short as a minute or it can be as long as uh God, what do we offer 30 minutes yeah, uh, for, for, automatic for auto, shutdown. auto shutdown so what happens when you unload your car you i mean your camera's dead you pull it out um, of the trailer and you park it under the awning. And then the camera stays on for a predetermined amount of time. And you're effectively just wasting the battery life of this camera throughout the entire weekend. Every time you move the car to go to tech and come back, it's parked. It's the, you're providing so many situations where it's not getting a charge um, that even, even being out on track for 
15 minutes, it's not going to be enough to recover the 0% the battery and do all of the operations that, that we require of it. So starting with a good potential amount of energy allows us to continue throughout the entire weekend and, and basically uh, circumvent the, the car being turned off and on so many different times. And setting that auto power down function yeah. at, a, at a reasonable rate. If you are a, a standing start kind of an operation, or, and and you go, you have to go out to pre grid, shut it off. Yeah, you may want to have it be a little bit longer, so it uh, doesn't have to go through that boot up functionality. But uh, uh, but typically, five minutes instead of the thirty minutes uh, saves a lot of power uh, uh, from the camera uh, be, having to be recharged during the run. The um, to, uh, to add to that too, if he's asking about an older camera, it, it is possible for those batteries to go bad too. So that yeah, it, it may be if it's you know old enough and seen enough cycles that uh, it's not holding a charge as as much as it should be. And finally, the, there's um, there's one thing I wanted to hold up here that uh, I have found a lot of folks that have really liked, especially the the, the folks that are uh, maybe maybe you're a driver coach or you you move it from from car to car, but we we have a little a little mount here that. Uh, uh, what's this called, Robbie? What's the actual name of it? That's the track day mount. Track track day mount. I I, mm -hmm. I I knew it, but I couldn't remember it. But it's uh it's it's a, a simple little mount that then cups a RAM mount for uh, specially built for a solo, uh, a smarty cam, and a suction cup mount to go right onto the window. And then this, we can get you a short cable. The long cable is fine and wired to it to it as well. But now your solo is driving your camera and this can be moved from car to car very, very quickly and easy, easily. So this is super popular with the driver coaching world where they, they move themselves from car to car and they have their, uh, their devices ready to go to do, it, to do everything they need. So this is really a cool, uh, cool little function for Smarty Cam Solo 2 and, uh, and, and, uh, and a RAM mount. So these are available from, uh, on the website from your dealers and, uh, and we get you those as well. So very, 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 very cool thing. So, uh, okay. With that, we're about at, about at the time. Anything else you guys would like to add as, uh, as I start to share the screen and get ready to, uh, to kind of close this out? Uh, compatibility. There's a, I have an MXL piece there. So this is Paul, Paul, Paul McFarlane. Um, and he's got an MXLP still wants to run a, a GPHD 2.1. Uh, the GP3, it's not going to be compatible with the MXLP stuff. Uh, we're going to, uh, some functions will work, uh, RPM and speed, but but that's for now. That's for the, the interim. And while we can edit and change the way that we communicate with these systems um, and they send data out, we can't fix the MXL firmware any longer. That's We, we can't go back in and make it receive this type of information. So uh, for now, some stuff will work, but moving forward, it's just not a feasible, compatible product. So Ray Studio 3, basically. So Smarty Cam 3 is, uh, will work with anything that is configured with, a, with Ray Studio 3. That's Correct. a good, good way to put that okay. and, not, and not, the, uh, not the older ones. But what about older, um, obviously older stuff does work with some of the, with some of the newer hardware as far as the loggers. Older Smart, uh, Smarty Cam 2.1s, 2.2s yep. still work. What about mixing and matching? Have, have you ran into that? A Smarty Cam 3 added to the, to a Smarty Cam 2 that is uh, part of the network? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. There is, there is some oddities. Uh, so the newer cameras, which we didn't really touch on, but they offer an, a, an option to broadcast your own data. Um, so you can curtail the data that's being sent to the camera system. And there can be like an inherent conflict between our standard subset of information. And once you click it off in your configuration, it's, um, yeah, there, there, there can be an issue. But if you're using the baseline settings, there's no conflicting messages. There is a lot of power that uh, we did not talk about in the Smarty Cam 3 world uh, as we've been chatting here today. It's just we only have an hour. We only have an hour <laughs> and uh, very, very difficult. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about maybe uh, deeper into some of those technical details uh, uh, in future webinars, but we really wanted to kind of sort out the differences, the power, what, what different ones can do. And so somebody could come to this video and this webinar and watch it and get an idea of, of what's available and what they do. So. Perfect. So I've started to, to, to share the screen. Let's kind of just tie this one up a little bit. Um, 
this video as soon as we get done with it i will go to work on it's not automated at all uh, unlike our smarty cam stuff right my uh my movement of these videos to youtube is not uh, not nearly as automated so i will work on getting this thing up it'll be up on on youtube within about an hour or so and uh, join all the rest of the webinars plus lots of other uh, videos as well uh, those will be up there very very soon and you can uh, uh, share share that around with everybody if you would please the um uh, customer support we've we've actually kind of touched upon it a, a few times here today that that uh, customer support is uh, is 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 really what we do here I like to, to say we're a customer support company that happens to sell racing electronics and uh, and that is, is is very true for us so if you uh, if you have a need give us a call uh, we'll give you some contact information for uh, for these two fine young uh, folks that join me here today but the 800 number is always a great place to start if you're out and you and you have something that you need a, a question answered give us a call or drop us an email we'll be there to help you um, our, our next webinar is um, uh, don't have it uh, locked down exactly what uh, who's going to join us and what we're going to cover almost uh, for sure it'll be something in the uh, in the area of detailed uh, data analysis we've been trying to get uh, uh, about every other one is get in and, and do some uh, uh, hands-on actual data analysis with some with some different people so that will be happening uh it'll be the tuesday after memorial day weekend so right after the big racing weekend of the indy 500 and and uh in the charlotte nascar race and and uh, monaco uh, that uh, all of us all like so much over that long weekend uh, on tuesday uh tuesday we'll have our next webinar right following that so join us at that point may 31st and um contact information as um uh, is we've we've maybe we've created a few more questions uh we answered a ton of them today but if uh if there's some questions that we may not have covered fully there are some email addresses for you all all of us get a lot of emails so give us a little bit of grace as uh as you as you email us uh, give us a give us a couple hours at least to answer back right now uh, sometimes longer but uh we're, we're all pretty good about uh, pretty good about that we realize uh, uh your time is very valuable and you need some information as fast as you can get it sometimes so uh, there's information from from uh, email addresses for all of us there so um perfect we've uh, we've hit our hour uh I'd like to maybe turn it over to you first brick uh, give us a, a, any kind of closing comments or anything you'd kind of like to add as we kind of close this one down uh thank you guys love you <laughs> I don't have anything else to add. <laughs> and a few words there isn't he uh, yeah the, uh, yeah exactly perfect uh robbie anything you'd like to add as we kind of close this one down i'm just always happy that you guys have me on to talk about hardware so if there's yeah. ever any subjects that you feel would be justified having me come on is just let us know and we'll see if we can put them together uh, but both of these guys are extremely knowledgeable, not just in their areas that they uh, that they uh, th that we use those for. They 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 know the software as well as I do as well. Hardware, their repairs, their building harnesses. These guys are uh, are, are superstars in the, in our world world here. So give them a holler if you need any information. I appreciate everybody being here, uh, talking about Smart Ecam three, and uh, looking forward to uh, to doing more in the future. Thanks everybody for coming, and we will uh, we will see you next time. Talk and to thank you. Soon. you <laughs> yeah, Tice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Tice, for uh, for doing our uh, our links. All those links will be available. That uh, if we talked about anything, will be available in the uh, description box. In when when we get into YouTube, all of those links will be available there as well. So, thank you, everybody, and uh, talk to you soon.